Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered in the name of Christ Jesus. Before we begin Holy Mass, we offer a prayer of spiritual communion. And so let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us make an examination of our conscience before God our Heavenly Father. Having confessed our sins unto God, I will recite the act of confession. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws, in my thoughts, in my words, and in what I have done or failed to do. I sincerely regret my sins, and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the God of peace furnish you with all that is good, and may you do his will. May he carry out in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory. To God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father of all that is good, help us accept responsibility for the evil things we have done and the good we have failed to do. Give us the grace to faithfully fulfill every task that you give us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the 26th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. It is my way. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue, to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm for today is taken from Psalm 25. And the response is, remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember, remember your mercies, O Lord. Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O oh Lord. Remember that your compassion, O oh Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O oh Lord. Remember your mercies, O oh Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his ways. Remember your mercy, O Lord. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, Complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do not do anything out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend. Of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. My son, hold fast to your duty. Busy yourself with it. Grow old while doing your task. Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterward changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not change later your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Having you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. These words are taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philippians. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In attempting to explain the vastness of the truths that are found in Holy Scripture weekly, I was once told by one of my parishioners that certain of my sermons were too biblical. I tried to explain that the Word of God heard and preached is a keystone to our faith and a sacrament in our church. A sacrament that brings about God's help, which we call grace, which helps to bring an individual closer to God by knowing God through Holy Scripture. Paul explains in his letter to the Philippians that he will magnify the Lord, whether it be in life or in death. We all understand that a telescope helps to bring distant things closer and that a microscope makes smaller things larger. 
it is in applying these instruments in a spiritual way that a believer can make Christ Jesus larger and closer in one's life and seen by others by their Christian conduct. In many of Paul's letters, he not only expands on the spiritual truths of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, but he also expands on the behavior of those who would call themselves Christians. This is where a microscope comes into being. For it is an instrument that helps to magnify ourselves, which examines and brings to light our shortcomings and our faults, our motives and behaviors. So what else is Paul saying in today's reading? I believe that Paul is telling his readers that moral conduct is an essential part of one's own spirituality. Paul speaks of, number one, making Christ the pattern of one's life. In his letter, Paul speaks of the virtue and of unity. He says that this unity can only take place through the consolation and the exhortation in the Son of God. And only if there is in fellowship with the Spirit of God. Paul writes, If there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of one mind with the same love, united in the heart, and thinking one thing. Number two, Paul tells his listeners that this unity is attainable only when one places others in a higher esteem than themselves. He describes this as lowliness. Now the great philosopher Plato defined lowliness in that state of mind which submits to the divine order of the universe and does not exalt oneself. Paul writes again, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. So how is this unity brought about? Paul uses the greatest, greatest example, namely Jesus Christ. For he writes, have in you the same attitude that exists in Jesus Christ. It is in the example of Jesus, our Lord, that he sought to bring unity to all people back unto the Father. So what was the attitude of Jesus? Number one. Paul explains that even though Jesus, who was in the form of God, did not regard himself equal to God, Jesus declares in John chapter 14, verse 28, the Father is greater than I. And in John chapter 14, verse 10, Jesus declares, the Father who dwells in me, he does the works. Number two, Paul goes on of how Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. Jesus constantly throughout his ministry, 
through his teachings and his miracles, magnified his heavenly Father and not himself. Number three, Paul tells us that Jesus humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus not only died, but suffered the worst type of shameful death, crucifixion. How many of us in humbleness of spirit, in our prayers unto the Father, have prayed as Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed, not as I will, but rather, Father, your will be done. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, may the wisdom of St. Paul as found in today's reading cause all of us to stop and reflect daily on our relationship with God through His Son. May we all magnify the Lord by placing God at the center of our lives, as Jesus did. For St. Paul concludes in today's reading, for this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend. Of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let those who have ears hear the wisdom. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father, you sent us the Holy Spirit, as promised by your Son, to sanctify us and guide our hearts so that we may better serve you. May all our petitions this day be received and blessed by you. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Polish National Catholic Church and the Union of Scranton, that they may be a beacon of light and a home to all people who aspire in pristine faith to be one 
with the undivided Christian church, in faith we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the clergy of our church, that they may lead the faithful entrusted to their care, to a greater knowledge and love of you, our Heavenly Father, in faith we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved holy name of Jesus perish, that its people may be inspired by the teachings of your beloved Son, Jesus, and work in building your kingdom here on earth, and in faith we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the hungry and the homeless, the unemployed, and for all those who are alone without anyone to care for them. In faith we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray on this Spunia Sunday for our sister organization, the Polish National Union of America, that its management and members may fulfill the important responsibilities entrusted to them, and through their efforts, the mission and fraternalism of the Polish National Union, that they may touch lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, Bishop Francis Hodor, the deceased bishops, priests, deacons, and faithful of our Polish National Catholic Church and of the Polish National Union of America. And also for all those who have lost a loved one and find it especially difficult at this time to cope with their loss, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Make known to me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. For the glory of your holy name, Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sin. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they, whose memory we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Receive this offering and give us the grace to accept our responsibilities and serve you faithfully. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. 
we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. It is out of our Lord's teachings, who throughout his life proclaimed your glory by walking worthily in the footsteps that you guided him. In him loving you and his neighbor in abounding in faith and good good works, and following the example of your son Jesus, may we be strengthened in our faith, live holier lives, and practice greater charity, so that one day we may be united with you. And so therefore, on this day we join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today we will offer the canon of an early church father, St. Basil the Great. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power, your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy, to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift, for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, 
proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his, his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread in this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Paul, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we might find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. My dear brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ ever be within your hearts. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free all of us from our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. 
Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food, and may the gifts I have received this day bring me healing and strength. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is full redemption. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, through this Holy Eucharist, may we be strengthened to work in your vineyard, so that we might find the fulfillment of our desires and the abundance of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of you this day. And may we work within the Lord's vineyard with love and with peace. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth this day and proclaim the teachings of our Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, I wish to thank you for coming and sharing with us today's Holy Mass. May God's blessings rest upon all of you and your loved ones, and may you constantly give praise and thanksgiving for all the blessings that you have received. We will conclude this morning's service with the offering of prayer, not only for ourselves, but most importantly for each other and for others for whom we do not even know that God's peace and blessings might rest upon all of us. We will also offer an intention for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed. May God be with you until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 